um, we are looking at topic 13 review problems. Um, please make sure you've done the GIM kit before you go over these problems with me because I'm using the problem straight off of GIM kit to review for your test tomorrow. So um, I have pulled up the GIM kit question. So we are going to work on this and see how we can do with it. So I'm looking at this question. It says Stephen has 48 Kit Kat pieces. Each package has four Kit Kat pieces in it. How many packages does Stephen have? So I am going to type. I know because it's better than my hand, my writing on the computer, but I have to write sometimes. So I know I have to do my sides check. So for F, my statement, how many packages does Stephen have? Stephen has blank, oops blank packages. I know that my I, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just so I can fit it all in. That did not get very small. There we go. I stands for identify the key details or key information. So what is the key information we have here? If I am looking, I'm going to actually circle it this time. I have know that he has 48 Kit Kat pieces. So he's got 48. That is his total amount is 48. 48. Okay. Each package has four Kit Kat pieces in it. So we know that one package has four pieces. The next package has four pieces. The next package has four pieces. And we have to keep on going all the way down here. That will take us a while, but we can still figure out what we need to do with this diagram. Okay. So then our next thing that we need to do is, oops, disappeared on me. Sorry about that. Um, I'll write it again here in a moment. So um, we know he has 48 pieces and each one is in four, a package with four, four pieces in a pack or a package. So we're going to put, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just so we can continue on. Hopefully I'll get faster with this. Okay. Next thing in our um, word problems, sides check. We have to do D, sides. D is for develop a plan. So if we go back um, and look at this again, and I don't know that I can draw it and keep it there. I'll draw it up here, and then I think it will stay here. So we knew we had 48. We know each package, he had there were four pieces in each package. So let me recreate it over here so it doesn't disappear on us this time. So we know we've got to keep that going all the way down here. So what we're doing is we're taking our total number and dividing it into smaller packages. So our plan for this one is going to be to, it just wants to disappear every time, 48 divided by packs of four. So that is our equation, 48, and I can't do a divide sign, divided by 4 equals, what is our solution going to be then? How can we do 48 divided by 4? Does anybody remember? It should be easy. We can do 48 divided by 4, or we can think of it as 4 times what, this is going to be a weird looking question mark, equals 48. So if I'm looking at my answer choices, I know it can't be 52 because that's bigger than 48. I know it can't be 44 because that would make sense. 4 times 44 would be a huge number. So it's between 18 and 12. If I look, I know 4 goes into 4 one time, 4 goes into 8 two times. So my answer is going to be 12. So 
So he, my answer is right here, 12. And that makes sense because he's taking a large amount of um, Kit Kats and putting them into a smaller into smaller packages. Let's look at the next question. Next question: What two equivalent fractions? Or sorry, what two fractions are equivalent? The letter C. It's supposed to say what two fractions are equivalent with the letter C on the number line. So if I'm looking at C on the number line, I need to figure out how many pieces or parts there are in this whole. So I'm going to count between these lines. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know that the denominator is going to be six because that makes up the whole because it's from zero to one. Now we need to figure out how many jumps or how many parts are there to get to C. One, two, three. So we know this fraction represents three sixths. I don't see three sixths on here except for right here. However, I need to check and see, is 4 eighths the same as 3 sixths? So if I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about equivalent fractions, which we did the other day, if I take this, I can divide this by 3, and I can divide this by 3, and then I end up with 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Here, 4 and 8. Oh, I know 4 goes into 8, so I'm going to divide by 4 over 4, because remember that's the same as dividing by one whole. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So are these equivalent fractions? They are, so that is the correct answer. And the next question, compare the following. 3 thirds and one, oops, I need to put on my marker, three thirds. So if I was gonna make a visual of three thirds, I could take a not very well drawn square, but just bear with me, cause I'm trying my best. And I know that I have to divide it into three parts to make a whole, and I have to color in three. So if I color in my three, that's one, two, not doing a great job with my coloring, but that's okay. We are going to still understand what we're doing. I don't get paid to do the videos. I get paid to teach, and it's hard to do it on the videos, but that's all right. Okay, so three-thirds. So how much is this of this whole thing is colored in? That is equal to one whole. So is three-thirds greater than, less than, or equal to one? It's going to be equal to one. Okay, the next question, compare the following fractions. One ninth, oops, again, I keep forgetting my marker, sorry, one ninth compared to one fourth. So if I were going to draw one ninth and one fourth, we need to take a rectangle. I'm going to draw my one ninth up on top. So I have to divide this into nine. I'm gonna do it the best I can. One, because nine is in the denominator, which means that's how many pieces are in the whole square. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm gonna actually take this. Let me see if I can figure out how to erase. I don't know if it'll let me or not. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is, um, just to help y'all see this better, I am going to take this off so you cannot, you don't see that. Because we need it to be divided into nine and we need both the top and the bottom rectangles to be equal so that we can compare them fairly, okay? So in the top, we should have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We wanna color in one ninth, so that would be this one piece right here. And then down here, we wanna divide this into fours, four pieces because that's, what the, again, what the denominator says. So one, two, three, four, and I want to color in one fourth. So looking at this, I can tell that one fourth, this one, 
is bigger than one ninth. So one fourth is going to be, sorry, be bigger. So that means one ninth is less than one fourth. Another hint, if the numerators are the same, then you have to look at the denominators and you're going to want the one that's less because that means that same sized um, cake or pie or pizza is cut into fewer slices. So one fourth is actually bigger than one ninth because that's nine pieces when this is only four pieces of the same sized pizza. Okay, so I went ahead and got started on this problem. This is another word problem. Um, Jenny needs to make 415 cookies for a party. She has 187 left to make. How many cookies has she already made for the party? So we, again, we're doing our sides check. So our statement is based on our question, how many cookies has she already made? So Jenny already made blank cookies. I identify the key details. So I know she has to make 415 cookies for the entire party. And then it says I, she has, still has 187 left to make. So that is the um, key details that we need for this problem. So I'm going to develop a plan. I'm going to use my bar diagram. So the total number she has to make is 415 cookies for the entire party. I'm going to draw my 415 up top. Now down below, we know two pieces or three pieces or however many pieces have to make up this total. Well, it says that she has 187 left to make. So we know she has not made that 187 yet. So I'm going to draw that over here. She still has a lot of cooking to do. And we know we're looking for how many cookies she's already made, which is this part, because we don't know how much she's made already. So we are going to take this, and we've developed our plan. So now we're going to write our equation, which is 415 minus 187 equals question mark. We could have also done 187 plus question mark equals 415 because, oops, excuse me, subtracting and addition, subtraction and addition are um, inverse operations. I'm not sure where that, what happened with that. My hand must have been on it. So I'm going to use my hundreds, tens, and ones chart. Hundreds, tens, and ones chart. I'm going to draw my 400. My 110 and my five ones, two, three, four, five. And now I have to take away 187. So I start with my ones. I have to take seven away. I don't have seven here. So I've got to come to my tens and I'm going to have to put add 10 over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I have enough I can take the seven away. So I'm going to take seven away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left here. Now I can move to my tens place. I need to take eight away, but I have zero here. So I'm gonna have to come and take a 10 away. And again, put 10 because 10 tens is the same as 150, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Now I need to take away eight of those. So one, two, three, four, five, those are all gone. Six, seven, eight, those are all gone. So now I'm left with two here. Now I have to go to my hundreds place and take one away. This one, remember, moved over to the tens place. So that okay, this time, which letter is located at one fourth on the number line? So if I'm looking at this number line, I find it interesting because this says fourth, but here I don't see it divided into four pieces. So I want to figure out how many pieces is this divided into? So I'm going to look and I'm going to count. It's from zero to one, so I know I'm going to stop at this one, but I need to see how many pieces there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight pieces, that's our denominator, in this whole which is interesting because I need to figure out, well, then one-fourth, how does one-fourth and something over eight, how do those go together? Because I know that four and eight go together. And if I'm thinking about equivalent fractions, 
I know if I do the same thing to the bottom, four times two is eight. I can do times two here because two over two is the same as multiplying by one whole. So that would be two eighths. So I can take this information now and I know I'm looking for the, the two eighths. So if I look here and I go one, two, I end up on the letter M. So let's see, just looking, if I divided this in at every second one, would that look like fourths if I'm going from zero to one? It does. One, two, three, four. So that's the same as one, four. Let's do yet another word problem. So I think this one looks like it's going to be a little different though, because there's a lot of writing in this one. So can we give up even though there's a lot of writing? No, we can't. We have to persevere and we have to read through all the answer choices. So Dusty and Oscar both made pans of brownies. Dusty made a smaller pan and cut. So I'm going to come and draw Dusty. Here's Dusty. We have Dusty and we have Oscar. Whoops. So Dust, Dusty made it. They both made a pan of brownies. Dusty made a smaller pan. So we're going to say that's Dusty's pan and he cut his into sixth. So let's see if I can cut this into sixth. Fairly equal. Not perfect, but fairly equal. And he ate two sixths of it. So if I'm going to color this in two sixths, we know he ate this amount right here, right? So now we need to look at Oscar. Um, Oscar made a larger pan. So we're gonna make his larger. There we go. And he cut his into thirds. Oscar likes brownies. It's like Oscar the Grouch. Um, and he ate one third of his brownies. So that's this section right here. So what do we know is true about this? I'm not even going to look at the answer choices. I am going to just observe what I see here. And I see they both made brownies. Dusty's pan smaller. Oscar's pan is larger. They both ate one third. Because if you look here, this is one third of Dusty's, which is the same as the third of Oscar's. But is it actually equal? It's not because Oscar's pan is larger. So we know that even though they're both equal to one third, Oscar's, Oscar ate more brownies. So let's read our choices now. Dusty ate more. Nope. I can mark that one out because I know Dusty didn't eat more. Oscar and Dusty ate bo both ate the same amount because they both ate one third. Well, that's true. But did they equal the same? Do, do these two pieces equal the same? No, they are not the same amount. Oscar ate more because his brownie pan is larger and one third of the larger brownie pan is more than one third of the smaller. I think that might be it, but I wanna check the last one just to be sure. Dusty ate more because sixths are bigger than thirds and I, I disagree with that. He did not eat more. So yes, the green one there is correct. Oscar ate more because his brownie pan was larger sentence is true. Five-fifths is greater than one. Five-fifths. So that would mean I'm going to do five out of five. One. I know my squares are not anywhere like they're supposed to be. I apologize. I could insert a box and try to work that out, but I think it would take us forever. So I know I divide into five parts. One, two, three, four, five. And it says to color all five. So if I color all five, one, two, three, four, this whole thing would be colored, which is the same as one. So I know it can't be this one. I know we've talked on one of the problems earlier. If the denominator, I mean, the, sorry, the numerators, the top numbers are the same, which they are one and one, then we look at the denominators and we know if we had a pie that was cut into five pieces, those pieces would be bigger if the same pie was cut into seven pieces. So one fifth is bigger than one seventh. So that could be right. Three sixths and three eighths, same thing. The numerators are the same. They're both threes. 
doesn't matter if they're ones or threes, we still would take this and say that's three pieces. So we look at, again at the denominators. We know a pie cut into six slices versus eight slices. The six uh, pie with six slices cut would be bigger pieces. So this would be bigger than three eighths. So that's not right. And then one fourth and one eighth. Again, same numerators. It's like they're asking you if you know how to do the numerators and what to do, how to compare them. So this time, four and eight. If we had a cake and we cut it into four pieces, that would be bigger than if we cut it into eight pieces. So we know that this is the correct answer. Allie and Alice both ate part, part of a pizza for lunch. Allie partitioned hers into eight pieces. So this is going to be Allie's which this was not good because Allie and Alice probably go together. They're two names that are too similar probably, but that's okay. Alice partitioned hers into two slices. So this is Alice. And she ate one slice. So she ate this whole, not really a whole, but half. It's one piece of her pizza. If they both ate an equal amount of their pizzas, how much should Allie eat? So if I did the same thing on Allie's side and she ate this whole side of the pizza, um, how many slices would she have eaten? One, two, three, four. So that means she ate four pieces out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four eighths. And it's spelled equivalent here. It meant to hit an A and hit the Q because the Q is right above the A on my keyboard. Is it above yours on your keyboard too? It should be. They're all the same. Okay, which fraction is equivalent to three? So if I'm looking at three boxes, I want to know which one it, which one of these is equivalent to that. So I'm going to just do something different. I'm going to go backwards. So here, this tells me I have a box that's cut into three pieces as we look at the denominator. This tells me I need to color in three boxes. So if I color in all three of these, does that equal to three holes? It equals one, so it does not equal three holes. Three sixths, so if I take a box and divide it into six, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. I color in three, so one, two, three, that equals the same as one half or three sixths, right? Which is what we were looking for. So does that equal one? It does not equal one. It does not equal even three because it's only part of a whole. So one third Divide it into three parts, since that's what it tells me to do, and it says to color in one. Does that equal one whole? No, because we're even missing part of that whole. So that cannot be the same as three. So what does this mean? So I'm going to draw a box, because it says to draw a box, and it says to color in three of those. Well, I can color in one but I haven't colored in three, so I'm gonna have to draw another box. So two, still haven't colored in three boxes. So I have to color in three. How many holes are colored in then? That equals three. So that is correct. Problems to go, woo woo. Okay, so which whole number equals five fifths? So again, looking at the numerator and the denominator, the denominator tells me how many pieces I need to divide this into. 
So I have to divide it into fives or five pieces or fifths. Three, four, five. And then this tells me how many I need to color. So I have to color in five. One, two, three, four, five. So how much does that equal? That entire box is colored. So that equals how many holes? One hole. One hole. This is one of the easiest ones we have on there because the diagram's already drawn for you. So that helps. So if I'm looking, it says, which frac fractions represent the following diagrams? Looking at this first piece of uh, pizza, I have two, one, two, out of one, two, three, four. So two out of four. And on this one, I have one, two, three, four pizza, pieces of pizza out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So looking down here, I see two fourths and four eighths. So that's where I got that number. But if I look at how much is actually eaten, or how, not how much is eaten, how much is left, excuse me, or you could look at how much is eaten because it'd be, end up being hopefully the same. We can tell that these two pizzas have the same amount left which means that they are equal. They are not greater than or less than, but instead they are equal. More questions after this one. Whoop, whoop, we're almost done. Okay, which equivalent fraction could be used to represent the A on the number line? So I am looking at the number line and I see A here. I can see the number there says two thirds, but in case I can't see that, I can show you how to figure that out. So remember to get the denominator, we have to count the number of pieces between zero and one. So I have one, two, three. So my denominator says that that is divided into three parts. How many pieces or parts are we to get to A? We are at the second part, so two thirds. I don't see that here because it says it wants to have an equivalent fraction. So remember when we're looking at equivalent fractions, we have to multiply or divide the top and the bottom number by the same number, okay, to equal one whole. So two times, let's say two. I always like to start with the smallest numbers just to see if that happens to be one of the answer choices. So two over two is the same as one whole. So any number times one equals the same number. That's why they would be considered equivalent. So two times two is four. Three times two is six. Let's see if that's an answer choice by chance. Four sevenths? Nope. We know that's not going to be it. Three thirds? Nope. Ooh, four sixths. We got the right answer. Woo! Yay! This problem seems like it's a very challenging one, but it actually is not. You just have to do a little bit of work. So it says, which of the following students recorded correct the correct equation? So if I'm looking at John, it says nine times zero. Nine times zero. Now I did this just a minute ago and it zoomed in and I don't know what it happened, so I had to redo it. So, but nine times zero, here John said it equals nine, but nine times zero, anything times zero I know is not equal to the number itself, it's equal to zero. So I know John is incorrect. So I'm gonna mark him out, and I know those two answer choices are not correct. And eliminate some answer choices. So now I'm gonna look at Jenny. She said four times eight equals eight times four. Sorry about my writing. I cannot get used to this. So four times eight is 32. Eight times four is 32 as well. So I know that is correct. So Jenny is correct. So that means she's here and she is here. So that didn't help us eliminate any choices. So let's look at Christy. Eight times four, ooh, that's the same as 32. Because we just did that, equals Two times four times four. So I know this is 32. Two times four, that's eight times four is 32 also. So I know that Christy is correct. So I'm going to check Stephen just to make sure. Four times six 
equals 2 times 3 plus, and it zoomed in again. I don't know what it's doing. I am so sorry. I don't know what I'm clicking to make it zoom, but I don't want it to zoom. Zoom back out. It's going to zoom out, but let's see if I click the pin if it's going to zoom back in. Everything disappeared, but we know we said no John. We said Jenny worked, Christy worked, but we wanted to check Steven. So four times six, I apologize. At least we can all laugh about it, right? Uh -huh. It's a learning curve. We'll learn eventually. Might not be this school year, but it will be eventually. But hopefully we won't ever have to do this again. I miss being in school. Okay, so this was Stevens. So we know four times six is 24. We need to see what this equals on this side. So two times three, that's six. Two times three is six. So six plus six would be 12. So Steven is incorrect. So we know it's Christy and Jenny for this one. Okay, um, I like to see these because they're kind of interesting. I, I see them a lot on different tests that I've seen for fractions. What is the shaded part of, of which, sir, the shaded part of which circle represents a fraction equal to four eighths? So we need to figure out which ones are not divided into eighths. But if I look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're all divided into eights, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have the denominator correct on all the pictures. So now we're going to see which one is shaded with four parts. One, two, three. So this is three eighths. One, two, three, four, five. So that's five eighths. One, one eighth. One, two, three, four. So even though they're not all together, it still equals four eighths because four is shaded. So they do not have to be side by side to still equal four eighths. I know this has been a long video. Hopefully you've been able to fast forward to, through the ones you don't need help on. So I'm looking at this and it says compare the fractions. So this is a little bit different because before we talked about how the numerators were the same, but this time the numerators, oh, they are the same. That makes it easier for us. Because remember, if the numerators are the same, we don't have to look at those. All we have to do is look at the denominators, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I know the trick for that, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it in pictures in case you struggle with understanding that. So this one's gonna be 3 sixths. This one's gonna be 3 eighths. So I'm gonna divide this one into sixth. So let's see if I can do it very fairly easily. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna color in three. One, ooh, two, three, four, and this one is three eighths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here I'm gonna color in three. One, two, three. So if I look, this one only goes up to this point. So which one is larger? Three sixths is larger. Also, remember the lower the denominator, the bigger the pieces are. So 3 6 is bigger or greater than 3 8 Thank you for joining us today. I know it wasn't a great lesson, but we had to review because you have a test tomorrow. You have an opportunity to show us what you know. We can't look, wait to see what you've learned in this unit.